At Trentham, competitors get down to it in the first post-war National Rifle Championships. Conditions were never worse for a championship meeting. A sweeping wind blowing across the range makes good shooting almost impossible. Watching the final match over the 900 yards fired by the top 50 marksmen for the King's Prize is His Excellency the Governor-General. With the war over, shooting is back where it belongs. A good sport. The riflemen keep the markers at the butts busy. Topping off a grand performance through the meeting under difficult conditions, H. King of the Opaki Rifle Club runs up 38 out of a possible 50 to win the Ballinger Belt and the King's Prize, highest shooting honour in the Dominion, and he's chaired off the range in traditional style. For New Zealand children, learning to swim is an important lesson. During February last, the Wellington Education Board organised a swimming campaign throughout their schools. By using every facility from public baths like these at Karori to smaller baths, rivers and beaches, they gave 6,000 children the right instruction. Sixty teachers were released from normal classroom work to give each child systematic teaching 20 minutes a day for three weeks. And it got results. Learners' pools like this one at Wadestown were used in the scheme. The Education Department subsidises the building of these pools, of which there are now 350 in the Dominion. The Wellington Education Board aims to make this scheme an annual one, a valuable part of the school syllabus, a lesson as important as other lessons. of the Samoan Advisory Council are on a goodwill tour of New Zealand and here they're being welcomed by the Prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition on the steps of Parliament buildings. The two leaders are Toa Matotua and Teo Sumaili. Also present at the reception is Mr. Ivan Zhabkin, the Soviet Minister. The Samoans are going to see a good deal of the Dominion before going back home. After nearly 12 years absence since leaving his post as Governor General, Lord Bledisloe with Lady Bledisloe has returned to New Zealand for a holiday. The Prime Minister has come to greet them and there's no doubt that they'll receive an especially warm welcome from the people of this country. For Lord Bledisloe was very popular during his tenure of office back in 1936. Here's wishing them a happy holiday. Into Wellington Harbour steams the American Antarctic Expedition. The early morning sun gives it a warm welcome back from the South Pole. Led by the flagship Mount Olympus and under the command of Rear Admiral Byrd, this part of Task Force 68 includes icebreakers North Wind and Burton Island. Three ships in all, and they've been constructed especially for polar exploration. The men on these ships have known nothing but ice packs and blizzards and bitter cold for months. But ahead of them lies six days and nights of liberty ashore in Wellington. But work comes before pleasure. The ship hasn't called it a port for 75 days, so a supply of fresh vegetables is a matter of some importance. And working parties are soon swinging them inboard. Admiral Bird has many social and official calls to make while the expedition's in port, so he's soon stepping ashore. After so long in such rugged regions, the ships need a good repaint and scrub up. However, in periods of peace, the Navy usually has more time to spare on being spick and span. But for the other watch, there's liberty ashore. Uh-uh, that guy's got a telephone number already. Included in all polar expeditions are husky dogs. Since the days of Captain Scott, these hardy animals have been a real and necessary part of any expedition to the regions of ice and snow. Born in Little America, these pups are still unaccustomed to the warm sunlight. Penguins, on the other hand, seem thoroughly at home. They're being brought back for presentation to zoos in the United States. Every so often they get a hose down. Even the waters of Wellington Harbour must seem pretty warm after the icy Antarctic. Any time is feeding time in the penguin world, and dyspepsia is the least of their worries. Scientists say that penguins can go for a week without food.
helicopter aircraft have played a major part in the success of the expedition. Working under extremely difficult conditions and faced with unusual problems in maintenance, they flew over thousands of square miles photographing and mapping great tracts of unknown territory. The helicopter can go sideways, backwards, upwards and downwards. It can also go forwards at a speed of 75 miles an hour. In fact, the advantages of the helicopter over almost any other means of transport seem obvious. There's room for two in the cabin, and they'll probably dream up a model soon that will allow space to stow away the rest of the family. And down below, believe it or not, the penguins are still eating. helicopter makes the descent. It drops into a landing. Just like coming down in a lift, only you can see where you're going. Helicopters are only a part of the great quantity of superb equipment Admiral Byrd took with him to the South Pole. It was the best equipped expedition that ever sailed into the southern regions. And here is Admiral Byrd to say a few words. Uh, greetings to the people of New Zealand. Uh, I'm afraid that as a moving picture performer, uh, I'm a good explorer. I'd rather face the 80 below zero of the Antarctic than a motion picture camera. Uh, this is my eighth visit to New Zealand. And I have made uh, many friends here. As I see it, one of the finest things in this world is old friends and, of course, one's family. As I leave New Zealand this time, I uh, feel like one of you, and I sincerely hope that I am not taking too much of a liberty in feeling this time as I leave that New Zealand is my second home. I want to take this chance to send my warm greetings to those of my friends here that I haven't had the pleasure of seeing this time due to their being uh, in distant cities or the press of time. I want to give my warmest thanks, people of New Zealand, for the wonderful hospitality they have extended to the officers and men of Task Force 68. And now, instead of goodbye, au revoir. For like a bad penny, I'm always turning up again. <laughs>